I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Well, welcome to Rama Praise. You know, this being Easter month, I've been dealing with different subjects concerning Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this week, I'm going to deal with the, the church is alive. Now, <clears throat> we need to realize that we have local churches, but in it talks about the church. Yes. And that's, that's, we need to get a little theological here, but that is a theological term from the Word of God talking about the ecclesia, the called out ones, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which encompass all believers and all of the local churches. Yes. And the Bible says that he is the head of the church. So from him, the head, comes his, his power, his ability. It comes to us, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is a direct spiritual connection between the church and, and, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we are a, the church. Mm-hmm is a living, thriving body of believers. What are we to do? We are designed to minister to the world or to carry on the ministry of Jesus that he had when he was on earth. Yes. That's what we're to do. That we're to win the loss. We're to help those that are in need. We are to heal the sick. Yes. And on and on the list goes. So let's go right now where I am speaking on the church is alive. If you read into the book of Acts, you'll find that they built the church by preaching the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that supernaturally launched the, the, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the ministry of Jesus did not end with his, the end of his, when he ascended on high. The ministry of Jesus still exists today through the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has a present day ministry. We are that present day ministry, the church, the body of Christ. Smith Wigglesworth said this in his book, Ever Increasing Faith, the ministry of Jesus did not end at the cross, but the acts and the epistles give us the account of what he continued to do and teach through those who he indwelt, the church. That is still happening today. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will continue with the same power until Jesus comes again. He said there in Acts, Acts 1, 8, this, or Acts uh, first chapter, this same Jesus that you say is sending will come again. Well, until he comes again, the church will be doing the work of Jesus Christ on, on the earth. That's what we're existing for. The church is made up of those who believe in Christ. Like them, like us now. See, we see him ascending into heaven in Acts 1. Acts 2, we see the beginning, the launch of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. There. Now, Lester Summerall said this, in one of his books, the book of Acts contains the blueprint for the spiritual structure of the church until Christ returns. What is a blueprint? It's what you build something off of. So we should be building the church of the Lord Jesus Christ on the same foundation and the same blueprint that they had 
in the Acts of the Apostles that they had in the epistles. Paul, John, hello, come on now. You see, the early church in the book of the Acts, we're the latter church. They're the early church. Was designed to display the supernatural power of God. It was not designed as an ordinary natural entity. With the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the building of the church became the focus. I believe that most people do not have a full understanding of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, why it was established, what it's for. You know, I, uh, we, you know, I went to Bible school and they, they teach this stuff in the Bible school and stuff, but the majority of the people that are in the church, I'm not talking about a local church, See, the church, is that's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, is made up of many local bodies that we call churches. But I'm talking about the one church, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is everyone that is born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and, accept, and has accepted Jesus Christ into their heart as their personal Savior. They, be, they are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's, let's give this a title. They like, people like titles. So we'll call it, The Church is Alive Today. Just as it was alive on that launch day. You see, we need to understand that we are a living, vital connection to Jesus Christ. Christ is the head of the church or his body, some people call it. The, when they're talking about the church, they're talking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and it's called his body, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's in, too innocent. Now, let's, let's, let's look at some scripture, okay? I want to look at Colossians 1.18, and I'm going to look at it in the New King James, the New Living, the NIV, and the Message. And the reason I'm doing that is because it may give you a little bit different idea in each one. Colossians 1.18 in the New King James, and he is the head of the body, the church. See, there it is. See, I keep saying the church, the body. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that all things he may, he may have, the, in all things he may have the preeminence, new living. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. Now, that's not talking about life. That's talking about spiritual death. The Bible says you were dead in your trespasses and sin, but you was alive. That's spiritual death. He, that's what he's talking about there. So that in everything, he might have the supremacy. Now, in the message it says, and when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like the, like the head does the body. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He is supreme in the end. From the beginning to the end, he's there, towering above, far above everything and everyone. Now, he said he is leading the resurrection parade. You see, when he arose from the dead, we, it goes back to when we are baptized in water, we are raised. And we, that's, that's what it's talking about when he's talking about the, the resurrection parade. How many of you have been baptized in water? 
We need, if you've been born again, you need to. Because all that, some people say, well, what's water baptism about? Water baptism is about what's already happened spiritually, but it, it, it is a natural thing of going under the water in which you die to sin and you're raised up out of the water in which you are resurrected to the new life in Christ Jesus. That's all it is. Some people try to give some kind of theological exclamation about it. That's it. That's what it's all about. All right? Now, these verses show us then that Christ is the head of the church or his body. And I, I want you to get that. When you hear people talking about the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, they're talking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. When they're talking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, they're talking about the body. And he is the head. Okay? Now, then that is the head connected to the body. Huh? <laughs> yeah. It is a vital connection. Because without the head, the body can't function. Hello? There is a direct spiritual connection between Christ and us who are the church. You know, sometimes people think there's a vast gulf between God and heaven and we're here on earth just getting by the best way we can. But that's not so because Matthew 28, 20 says that he is with us always. How is he with us? Through the word of God, through his spirit. How many have been filled with the Holy Spirit? Through the Spirit. You see, that's why when, you're sal when you have salvation, you're born of the Spirit. But then when you receive the Holy Spirit, then you're what we call being baptized in or immersed in the Spirit of God. Say this with me. Christ, Christ is, is the, head the head of the church, of the church. or his body. What does that mean? That means that we have his life, his strength, his energy, his power. John 10.10 10 says, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich, satisfying life. Who is he giving a rich, satisfying life to? The church, his body that he's the head of. This means then that the very life of God is flowing in us because each one of us make up the church. The New Testament uses a word, a Greek word called zoe. Zoe actually refers to the life of God or everlasting life. There's a man that I'm named after, is Kenneth E. Hagin, that was a very well-known minister of the gospel. And he had a book called Zoe, the God Kind of Life. He said this in his book. It is in re reality, God imparting his very nature, substance, and being into our human spirit. You know, Jesus referred to this vital living connection between himself and believers by saying he was the vine and we were the branches. Now, you, you see, when we say that, we don't really get to fully understanding of that. But they had... The grape vines, the vines that grew the, the grapes. And they had olive trees with branches. What he was referring to is that he was the main part and the branches received their strength from that. Well, let's just go read in John what he said. I'm going to read the New Living Translation. Anybody getting anything out of this? 
You know, I, I think it's good sometimes when we can establish what we're really a part of. You can't really operate properly until you really understand what you're a part of. It says in verse 5 of chapter 15 of John, Yes, I am the vine, you're the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them, they will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me, my words remain in you. You may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Now, if you go right outside this building, you'll find some different kinds of bushes and, and trees out there. But each one of them has a main stem or trunk or vine, however you want to call it. And from that comes out different branches. You break off a branch and lay it down it won't be very long until it's dead. Right? But all the others, you look at them, they're still alive. Why? Because they're drawing all of their strength from what they're connected to. Have you understand what I'm saying to you? This indicates then that he is the head and that his strength his power, his ability, his knowledge, everything flows through him to the church. Now, God has designed the church to be a revolutionary force in the earth. Now, somebody said, what are you talking about? Well, Go back and read about Jesus when he was here on earth. He was a revolutionary force, right? He raised people from the dead. He told the water to be, to be quiet, and it was. Hello, he walked on water. I mean, yeah, that was revolutionary. His church... That's what we're designed for. We'll talk about that more in other places. But it says, he said, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. See, the enemy of God, the devil himself, is against anything that is godly. He took a third of the angels and he was going to, said he was going to overthrow God. Well, God said that ain't going to happen and kicked him out of heaven with those third of the angels. So two thirds of the angels is left. So that means for every one of the angels that the devil had, they had two to one, right? And he is still against God. And he will manipulate society he will manipulate circumstances in the earth to come against the church. He will do the same thing to come, in, for, come against you individually to get you out of the church. But Jesus has already told us the power of hell cannot win against those who believe and are a part of the church, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people are complaining about the church and saying what's wrong with it. Well, yeah, the church is made up of people. And there will be problems. Somebody said, well, prove it by the Bible. All you got to do is go read Paul's writings to the church at Corinth. <laughs> I mean, hey, Anybody ever read 1 Corinthians? Well, I'm glad to see about 50% of this congregation <laughs> reads the Bible. 
Anybody ever read 1 Corinthians? Oh, now that looks more like it. <laughs> Was not the Corinthian church a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you read in there where they had disagreements and problems and people doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing and Paul had to correct it? When it come to the communion table, he had to correct them because they were trying to use that as a place to get their food. And he said, this is, not what, this is not what this table's about. I'm just paraphrasing it. So as long as there are people in the church, the enemy is going to work on them to try to destroy the church from inside. But we need to learn to walk in love in the church. Now, I didn't say be a doormat. You can walk in love without being somebody, walk, somebody walking all over you, okay? And that's another, time, that's another subject. Being a part of the church doesn't mean that we're perfect. Some people think that if you're a part of the church, you're going to be perfect. Everybody that's perfect, I want you to stand up right now. If anybody stands up, we're going to have a prayer meeting for you. Because it said all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. So we're going to pray for you. We don't want that to happen to you. I didn't see any takers because we all know that we come short on stuff. But you see, we need to realize, though, that we are hooked up with the power of God. We're hooked up with the head, Jesus Christ, who is perfect. And he's trying to impart that to the church, his body. They're trying, he's trying to impart that to us. You know, all of us should have a sign hung around our neck that says, Under Construction. Because we are all under construction because the more we read, the more we learn about the head of the church, the more we change our own lives. You know, the church. Say it, the church. I'm a part of it. Say it. You're connected to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're connected to the one who is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. We're connected to the one that they crucified, but he's now alive and sits at the right hand of God. And if you go back in history, you'll find out that the place of honor for the person that was second underneath the king sat in his right hand. That's why it's important. That's an important part. He sets at the right hand. See, when they said that in the, wrote in the word of God, back then they understood that. We don't understand that so much now. But we need to. We are connected to Christ, Jesus. There's no other name like that. He is supreme over all. The life, the strength, the power for the church and for you individually that make up the church comes from the head, Christ. Everything you do in your, as a body, every time you pick up something, every time I take a step, it all, all of it comes from the head. The leg, the feet, the hands, nothing works without the head. Come on now. I'm trying to get you to understand, we, the church, 
and we're made up of many churches and many individuals in the church, but we are all underneath the head, Jesus Christ, just as our body's underneath our head. So our strength, our power, everything comes from the head. I trust you enjoyed what I had to say about the church is alive and realize that we all that are born again believers are a part of the church, the church, the, yes. the ecclesia, the, call, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is made up of all of us and made up of local churches. You know, honey, I think of that song, uh, Let the Church Be the Church. Yeah. It says the church triumphant is alive and is well. Yes, and that's you know, true. It is alive and it is well. And right. We're looking forward to the coming of the Lord. Yes, this has been, a, this has been Easter month. Yes. And... I have an a, a offer that I have for you that I've had all month. It's my three CDs, Discovering Jesus, talking about uh, Christ the Redeemer, the name above all names, the name of Jesus, and Christ the soon coming King, and then Dad's Christ the Deliverer, talking about He is our Deliverer, mostly in healing, but other, other things yes. also. And these are available for an all, for a gift of eighteen dollars or more. You want to get these? These are really good. In fact, I did, th this this series just came out. Yes, it, uh, did. it, it just in came. February. It just came out in February. Mm -hmm. So this is is new material. So hey, you want to get a hold of that? That's right. You know, uh, this is April. Can you believe it's Can you almost believe gone? That. April is, is gone. Yes. And man, this 2020 is going fast. Way too way fast. Way too fast. We way need to slow fast. it down. Yes. But I want to thank all of you that are partners with us for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. And we shall be living ready for Jesus to come at any time. He is coming back. See, that's what we're supposed to be doing as Christians. We're supposed to be doing everything that we're supposed to be doing, but at the same time, we're looking for Jesus to come. Looking to the return of Jesus. Discovering Jesus, a powerful new three CD series by Kenneth W. Hagan. Discover the one who enables us to live victoriously. Thank God we don't have to delegate all of God's blessings to the future. We can have deliverance now in this life. Plus, an anointed CD by Kenneth E. Hagan, Christ the Deliverer. These four CDs can be yours today for a gift of $18 or more. So call toll-free right now, 888-PRAISE-8, or log on anytime, day or night, to order at rhema.org. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.